if we look at uh, how we tended to do it, we looked at it from a layered approach. We wrote a paper uh, a couple years back. It was myself, Brian Kelly, and Jamie Edelstein. And uh, what we tried to do is how can we explain this to make it make sense when we know there's all this information around the hip and its relation to the back, the relation to pronation. So we broke it down into layers. And the layers that we broke it down into were osteochondral layer, inert layer, contractile layer, and neuromechanical layer. I can say this pretty confidently that the further the issue uh, comes from the center of the hip, the more difficult and less predictable the outcome is going to be. So if you've got a person that's 18 to 30 years old, they have a true bump, uh, they have the true impingement, the FAI, and they got great muscle tone. A lot of people like that, if they're having symptoms, I'll tell them, let's get you two to three weeks of rehab, build up the muscle as much as we can, go get surgery. You're going to have a 95% outcome that's going to be very favorable. When we get that dysplastic patient, that if you think about what happens in that dysplastic patient, not only do you not have good bony architecture for providing coverage, but your inert tissue sometimes might be a little bit more collagenous. Uh, they may be a little bit looser than they need to be. So now what happens is if you don't have good bony architecture, you rely on those inert structures. When the inert structures don't have good uh, collagen makeup, what do you have to do? It's just like the shoulder now. You're going to have to rely on the contractile tissues to help to provide stability.